Hey everybody, uh, I have a big time splurge alert, but it's uh, because I am celebrating something awesome. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Dime. So like I said, today I have a big time splurge alert. Today I'm reviewing the Don Melcor Vintage Number no. 28 2014 Cabernet Sauvignon from Chile. It is 14.5% alcohol by volume and I paid $90 for it before tax at my local Total Wines and more. And you're probably going, why in the hell would you spend $90 on a bottle of wine? Um, well, because I passed my W set. W set level three. Passed it, just got the confirmation. It is uh, very nice to have that off my chest. Very, very nice. Uh, so it's broken into two sections. It talks about um, your theory section and then your tasting. So, uh, and it lets you know if you passed, passed with merit or passed with distinction. On the theory, I passed with merit. Super happy about that. Very, because that was the part I thought I was gonna fail. Uh, on the d tasting, I pass with distinction. So when I talk about how things taste and stuff, you don't have to take it with a grain of salt. Like, I, I actually apparently know some stuff about this now. Uh, and then overall grade was passed with merit. So I didn't pass with distinction. I would have required both and to be distinction in order to pass. But you know what? I'm happy I, I first of all, I'm happy I passed. Very, very, very happy I passed with merit. So on that note, let's read the back of the bottle because I normally don't do this but I thought this was interesting and that's why I bought this bottle. The 2014 Vintage Don Melcor is an exceptional quality. The season began with a cold spring and early summer was warm. The cool conditions and cold nights encouraged ripening with greater expression and concentration of aromas and flavors in the grapes. The 2014 stands out for its red fruit that accentuates the mineral character of the cold ashes and pencil lead typical of Cabernet Sauvignon. The 2014 Vintage is 92% Cabernet Sauvignon and 8% Cabernet Franc. So, on that note, I'm excited because I, I like both of those. Let's take a look at this wine. Alrighty, so from a color standpoint, you are... You are a... Well, you're... You're somewhere, I'm gonna say you're a medium ruby, but you are getting close to having a little bit more of a color turn. Give it another year or two and you'll be garnet. But for now, you are a medium ruby. No artifacts, no cloudiness. From a nose standpoint, oh man, this smells good. <laughs> this smells like, this smells like Chilean cab. So I'm getting this nice kind of red cherry, kind of raspberry. When they talked about pencil lead, they had they had it. This one has a little bit of a pencil lead note to it. I'm also getting a little bit of like a thyme, like a mushroom, uh, a little bit of a forced floor type effect going on here. There is a touch of pyrazine. It smells like maybe a little hint of volatile acidity. Uh, I'm saying that because it has a little tiny bit of a balsamic note to it. It's not very strong. There's a very hint of it. Getting what? It's like black currant, maybe black berry. Yeah, just an earthiness. There's also this. Um, I think um, you know what? I bet the pyrazine is coming. I bet the pyrazine is coming from the cob front. I'm, I'm bet you that's what it's coming from. And there's what is that? There's like a touch of like a coffee. Maybe a. A dark chocolate and a little hint of leather. So there is there is a little bit of primary, secondary, and tertiary. Very nice. All right, so for, for a taste. Medium plus tannins, medium plus alcohol, medium plus body. I know alcohol in level three is low, medium, high. I was saying, let's say medium alcohol then. Now, high alcohol, high alcohol. The, this is even though even though the tannins are medium plus, I'm pulling it back. Medium tannins. It's not sucking my mouth dry. Medium plus acid. Lots. So this fruit is very dense. This is. I'm getting actually on here. 
I'm getting more of the dark fruits on the taste, including some black plum, which I didn't get on the nose. But there's a lot of heavy, dark fruits on this up front. And it was not until you get to the finish that you actually get the red fruit. That tertiary though, man, that hits you straight up front. And it goes all the way back. There's a noticeable dark chocolate slash coffee note. And I say that because it kind of has this bitterness of a black coffee, but it also has this almost like a dessert-like quality, not sweetness, but like a dessert-like quality that you would get from a dark chocolate, like a dark chocolate. Think of it like a dark chocolate covered espresso bean. That's what this is like. There you go. A little bit of a leatheriness, that earth and that kind of forest floor mushroom combo dances, especially on the mid palate, goes into the finish and then drops off. And then you're just kind of left with this dark fruit finish and a little bit of leather, a little bit of leather. So let's take a look at you. So from a balance standpoint, I'm going to give you a check mark. I feel like the body alcohol acid, everything's in balance. Um, yeah, I really don't have anything to complain about on that length. Medium plus, I'll give you half a point. Intensity, that dark fruit's intense. That tertiary's intense. The secondary, not so much. I thought I would have had more secondary. And I mean, I'm, 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 I smell it, but I don't taste it. Not as much as that. Yeah. So, so because you don't have all of the different things on the palate, I'm gonna give you half a check. And then from a complexity standpoint, you are complex. I'm getting a lot of tertiary notes, getting a lot of secondary notes, especially on the nose. And I'm getting a lot of primary fruit notes and they're different clusters. I'm getting a lot of dark fruit, getting a lot of red fruit. So on that note, three, you're very good. At $90, you're a very good wine. Now, one thing I will say, I'm doing this as a splurge, but this kind of helps me validate my channel to some standpoint because I've given very good the bottles that are one sixth this price. So, I mean, it goes to show you that while it is nice to be able to say you splurge on a bottle of wine from time to time, it's not always necessary. Now, here's the deal. Once you get especially past that $50 price range, if it's not at least very good or questionably very good going into great, I, I would say you're getting screwed in terms of your wine. So. Very, at this price point, very good is a minimum. If you're not getting very good wine at $90, yeah, you're getting screwed. I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you had the Don Melcor Cabernet from Chile? I'd be interested to know if you have. Leave a comment below, and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime. And hopefully, because I didn't blow all of this month's budget for wine, just like 90% of it. Um, hopefully I'll have more videos for you this month. I'll see you later.